Hello, good day everyone. Welcome back to our subject, English for Academic and Professional Purposes 12. We are now in Quarter 1, Module 4, which is entitled Outlining Reading Texts. You are still with me, Ma'am Erika May Y. Perja. So, our objective for today is to outline reading texts in various disciplines. So, before we begin with the lesson, I want you to look at the pictures first. So, makikita nyo na we have a before and after look sa, sa room na nasa screen nyo. So, what can we say about the picture? Okay, good. The first picture shows a messy room while the second picture shows an organized room. So, okay na siya, naayos na siya. Um, naligpit na, kung baga. Okay. So, let's see at the next one. How about this? Before and after. What can you say about the picture? Who can relate? Yung messy, messy kitchen at saka yung organized kitchen. So, uh, if we are going to see, uh, to look at it closely, uh, the first picture, in the first picture, Messy siya kasi, magkakahalo lahat ng mga cookwares, right? May pan, may casseroles, uh, may mga dish, dish pans, together with, ayun, yung plates, kasas, kasama ng mga plates yung mga takip. And then we have the electric fan here, diba? Tapos ito, broken yung, ano niya, yung door. So, uh, in short, this is a very messy end. Look at this, oh, may wire dito. And, uh, nag, uh, ano din siya, nag, propose, na, pa, na, bibigay din siya ng danger doon sa household. Kasi, yung ang nakalawit na wire. Na anytime pwedeng mag-cause ng spark or ng, en, ng, ano, ng sunog. While on the second picture, what can we say? So, by looking at it closely, we can notice that, Lahat ng magkakapareho ay magkakasama. Look. Okay, so yung mga frying pan, saucepans, and ito yung mga kaserola. And the plates are arranged nicely. Meron siyang rack. Um, then look at this, meron siyang, and ito yung stove niya. So kung titingnan natin siyang mabuti, the, the things in the kitchen are arranged uh, accordingly or in their... Uh, logical position. Why did I say logical? Kasi, tignan nyo, uh, yung mga pans nasa itaas. Yung mga plates nasa baba. Bakit hindi nandito yung plates? Or nandito? Bakit yung plates na nasa baba? Kasi nga, we always use the plate for, uh, plates for eating. At saka yung pag nagluluto tayo, yung mga dish na naluluto, we also put it there. Diba? Kung wala tayo mga dish pan. While yung kalan, yung stove, why is it here? Bakit hindi siya nandun sa taas? Kasi nga, ginagamit natin siyang pangluto. So, to simplify, when we organize, we try to group them according doon sa mga kapareho niya ng function. So, for the next slide, let's answer these motive questions. The first one is, how do we feel when we see things organized? So, how does that make you feel? Seeing the first kitchen and the second kitchen. Imagine living uh, uh, living in a house, tapos ang kitchen maganito sa una. So, how would you feel? Magugustuhan mo ba magluto? Would you enjoy cooking and eating and staying there? Kesa dito sa kabila. Siguro kung dito ka sa kabila, talagang every, every minute, baka naguhugas ka ng plato or baka every minute nagluluto ka tapos may cover, may... May ano, nagko-cover ka ng luto mo or nagbo-vlog ka, ba? So, let's try to answer that. How, how do you feel when things are organized? Of course, um, we feel relaxed. Diba? Isa yun sa nararamdaman natin. And uh, we, we feel very confident in showing the place or our place to other people, lalo na kapag organized, pinagmamalaki talaga natin, di ba? Talagang picture tayo ng picture, lalo na pagkakalinis ng bahay, di ba? I see some of you doing that. Di ibang students ko. Next question. How do we organize? So, paano nga ba tayo nag-organize? So, kung mapapansin niyo yung sinabi ko kanina, we arrange it uh, logically or we group 
the things that we are organizing according to their use. Or basta may sinusunod tayong groupings. Minsan kasi hindi according to use eh. Pero depende yun sa hinihingi ng pagkakataon kung ano talaga. Yung gagamitin mong ano, by group. Kung ano yung, kung paano siya i-group. Okay, next. How is organizing related to outlining? Papaano nga ba? Related ba yung or being organized sa topic natin for today? Um, the answer is yes, it is related. So if you also answered yes, your answer is correct. So how is it related? When we try to outline, we try to organize it. We try to organize our thoughts. So uh, we outline um, before we write a paper, and we also out we can also outline after writing a paper. Okay, so let's proceed. Oh, next slide. Let us uh, first discuss outlining reading texts. Outlining is a tool used in writing process to help organize your ideas, visualize your paper's potential, structure, and to further flesh out and develop points. So, outlining ay ginagamit daw sa writing process para ma-organize mo yung ideas mo. Kasi, once na nagbigay na sa'yo ng topic, and then the topic is, uh, you find, and if you find the topic very interesting, yung mga ideas sa isip mo talagang biglang magsusulputan yan. Talagang hindi mo siya mapipigilan, madami kang naiisip na idea. Kaya lang, uh, when you don't organize it properly, magiging magulo yung paper mo. Although nabigay mo lahat ng ideas na tingin mo yung magaganda. So, what else? When you outline, tapos na tapos mo na siya. You can clearly see your paper's potential. Nakikita mo yun, ay, maganda tong magiging paper ko na to kasi magaganda yung mga arguments ko. Magaganda yung mga naisip kong points. Okay? And here, to further flesh out and develop points. So, minsan kasi habang nag-outline tayo, mas lalo tayong nakakapag-isip. Mas lalo tayong nakakakuha uh, ng ibang point of view. Okay? So, uh, mas, mas gumaganda yung paper. It allows you to understand how you are to connect information to support the thesis statement and the claims of the paper. So, kumbaga parang ano kasi to, when you write a paper, pinapangatwiranan mo yung thesis statement mo. So, when you outline, nakikita mo na kung related ka pa rin ba doon sa thesis statement mo. Kung kadugtong pa rin ba siya, kung nagja-jive pa rin ba, if, if the statement or if, the support, if your supporting details is really doing the support the thesis statement needs. Okay. Kasi dapat, syempre, ang sinusuportahan mo, yung sinabi mo, hindi yung magugulo ka na kung ano-ano na yung mga sinabi mo. Okay, so halimbawa, uh, your topic is about face-to-face -face class. Ay, suspension of the face-to-face -face classes or yung mga, uh, oh, yung face-to-face -face class nga. So halimbawa, uh, your stand with that is uh, para sa'yo, hindi naging maganda yung effect. So, kailangan yung mga supporting details mo, ang ibig sabihin, or nasumusuporta dun sa idea na nagpapakita na hindi maganda yung naging effect. ba? Baka mamaya bigla kang nalito, ang supporting details mo pala nagpakita ng maganda ang naging epekto ng walang face-to-face -face kasi ligtas ang mga bata. Or kasi nakapagtrabaho yung mga batang gusto magtrabaho habang nag-aaral. It provided opportunity. Pwede mong ilagay yan, pero it does not support your um, thesis statement. Okay? So, it says here, an outline provides you with a space to consider ideas without easily needing to write complete paragraphs or sentences. Um, outlining saves you the time and effort. Kasi nga, dito sa outline, susulat mo lang siya, tapos parang keywords lang, hindi mo pa kailangan buuin. Ito yung sinasab uh, sinasabi ko sa students ko. When you write an essay, you cannot start right away. Yung magdadraft, uh, no, not draft. Magsusulat ka directly agad, yun na yun, tapos yun na ipapasa mo. No. Kasi ano yun, um, lalo kang magugulo or you cannot come up with a good essay. So the first thing that you need to do, of course, is to outline your ideas. Okay? Sana nakakasalad yung iba. So we have here examples of outline. So outline ng outline si ma'am, ano ba ibig sabihin ng outline? Look at this one. Ito ba yung outline? Outlined? No. Ito yun, yung outline. So, if you will notice, kapag hindi ka nag-outline, dire-diretso yung paragraph mo. Dire-diretso yung idea mo. Well, if you do the outline, 
Meron kang thesis statement, pero meron kang body paragraph 1, body paragraph 2, body at conclusion. So, ano laman ng body paragraph 1 mo? Siyempre, palaging merong topic sentence. So, introduction, di ba yan yun? Yung parts ng essay, introduction, body, conclusion. Yun lang naman yan eh, yung tatlong basic parts na yun. Di ba? Most of the time kapag gumagawa ka ng essay. So, dito gusto niya ng dalawang discussion. Kaya meron siyang dalawang body paragraph. Okay din yan. Sometimes, ako ang nire-require ko pa kapag ka talagang mga reaction paper or position papers. At least three eh. Three arguments. Iba pa yung counterclaim. Okay? So, every time you make a paragraph, hindi na introduction na this paragraph, um, palagi kang mag-uumpisa sa topic, sentence. Okay, so halimbawa, ang thesis statement mo ay um, yung face-to-face -face classes um, deteriorated the quality of education that we, uh, that we give to our students. O halimbawa, iyon. So, pa, ibig sabihin nun sa Tagalog, ah, parang pinababa ng level ng quality ng, ng education na binibigay natin kasi nga walang face-to-face. -face. So, sa body paragraph number one mo, you need the evidence. Pero bago ka mag-evidence, kailangan mo yung topic sentence mo. Okay? So, pwede mong ipasabihin dun sa topic sentence mo na many uh, students, uh, many grade school students are still, uh, still non-readers. O pwede yun, pwede mong ilagay. Ibig sabihin, maraming bata pa rin na grade school ang hindi nakakabasa. Or pwede mo ilagay doon na tumaas ang number ng mga hindi nakakabasa. So, pwede yun. Kaya lang, when you say that topic, when you use that as your topic sentence, you need to provide fact. Ay, sorry. You need to provide an evidence. So, yung susunod na sentence mo, kailangan may evidence. Yun yung nakalagay sa detail. O, tas detail to your explanation doon sa evidence mo. Okay? So, hindi ko masyadong i-aano uh, yun, yung part na yun, kasi meron pa tayong discussion para doon talaga sa pagsusulat ng isang buong ganito. Okay? So, for now, doon tayo sa basic, outlining. So, sa outlining, makikita mo yung topic. Ayun yung mga main topics, yung nakabold. And we have the subtopics. Ayan yung mga nasa ilalim, detail 1 and detail 2. Yung mga supporting ideas yan. So, what are the two main types of an outline? Meron tayong tinatawag na topic outline. A topic outline provides an overview of the topics to be included in an essay. Ito mga keywords lang. Mga topics lang. Kaya nga topic outline. Mga keywords lang at hindi siya sentences. Halimbawa, ito. Um, the three political theories. Ano yung tatlong political theories? We have neon Marxism, pluralism, and elitism. Then, number one, ilalagay niya doon sa loob ng paragraph na yun, yung definition and description. Nilagay niya ba yung mismong definition? Hindi. Okay lang yan. Kasi ibig sabihin, ang ilalagay mo doon yung definition. Pero hindi mo siya nilalagay sa outline. Okay? So, topic outline, of course, it saves you time. And it saves you energy. And the effort na magsulat ng magsulat ulit. But, if you choose to write it the exact, uh, to write the exact uh, information there at para hindi ka napabalik-balik kung saan ka man tumitingin ng information, pwede kang gumawa ng sentence outline. In a sentence outline, the thesis and the topic sentence of each supporting paragraph are fully written out. So ito, ito na yon yung ilalagay mo. Dudugtungan mo na lang yan ng minsan ng end, but, moreover, yung mga connecting words natin, yung mga connectors. Kumagamit na lang tayo nun, parang kaunting palabok lang para magkaroon sila ng connection. The sentence outline forces part of the essay to be written out in sentence before the first draft. So dito, sentences na ilalagay mo. Bago pa yung draft. Okay? So, outlining, uh, you have to understand first the topic, tapos mag outline ka ng idea, magbe-brainstorm ka sa sarili mo, pagkatapos nang tsaka gagawa ng draft, tapos i-edit mo hanggang magawa mo yung final paper mo. Okay, so let's discuss the five steps in outlining a text. Outlining can be done before writing an essay or after reading a paper. Yes, this is very true. But most of the time, syempre, bago ka pa rin makagawa ng paper, you still need to outline. Kailangan mo pa rin mag-outline. Kasi nga, that is your way to organize the paper and your thoughts also. So the first step is to read and comprehend the text. So we are talking dito na halimbawang gumawa ka ng ano? Gumawa ka ng... Outline after reading a text. So, the first thing that you do is to read and comprehend the text. Yung binasa mo. 
Next, write a clear thesis statement. So, linawin mo ano ba yung naintindihan mo na pinaparating nung binasa mo. Yung in general, ano yung gusto niyang iparating. Next is to create an outline. Ayun, nahanapin mo na yung main topic, subtopics, topic outline, details, supporting details. Next, organize your outline using the supporting details. So, ito yung sinasabi ko, hanapin niyo yung supporting details. Next. Sorry. Ay, ano ba yan? Yeah. Okay, so D, adjust your outline as needed. So, you can still adjust it. Kung meron kayong kulang na, na idea or meron kayong gusto idagdag, pwede mo pa rin siyang i-adjust. Ang maganda dyan, kung naka-outline na siya, pag nag-adjust ka or nagdagdag ka, alam mo kung kanino mo siya i-grupo. Alam mo kung, kanino, kung kaninong idea related yung ilalagay mo. Okay? S next. In, uh, in, in watching a movie or in, in telling a story, there is also another way to understand a story better, and that is to outline it. So, so minsan ginagawa na natin to sa mind natin, eh, sinong bida, sinong, sinong bida doon sa palabas, ano ginawa ng bida, sino yung kalaban, tungkol saan yung palabas. Pag nasasagot mo na yun sa isip mo, hinahaning mo na, you are trying to organize your, your uh, the movie or the story that, the story that you have watched, um, na naka-outline yun. Yung parang outlining na din yun kasi ino-organize mo eh. Pero mas maganda, syempre, kung i-outline mo siya sa totoong papel. Kasi mas, mai mas maiintindihan mo siya. Or lalo na kung gagawa ka ng report. Hindi naman pwedeng naka-ano naka lang sa memory mo sa isip yun. Dapat talaga written siya. So, what are the five key elements of a short story? The things that I will discuss here are uh, supposedly na-discuss na siya sa, ano, sa junior high school niyo. So, this is just a quick review ha. Um, so, these five elements of a short story uh, are the ones that we are going to use in writing an outline. Kung story-based yung text, ha? Pero kung hindi siya story-based, sanibawa, essay siya at stand siya or position siya tungkol sa isang issue, you cannot use this. This is only for stories or short story. Of course, we have the setting. So, yung setting, yun na nagsasabi kung kailan, uh, kung kailan saan nangyari, even the situation itself. Sinasabi dyan kung kamusta ba yung situation ng mga babae noong panahon ng story, pinapansin ba sila, or uh, powerless ba sila noon, or may voiceless, or numa, yun yung mga panahon na may boses na sila. Yun yun, yung situation. We also include that under settings. Ngayon, kung wala namang situation, wag kang gagawa ng situation. Kailangan nandun talaga siya sa story. Kung wala situation, okay lang walang ilagay. Next is the character. So, the characters are the people or the uh, animals, pwede, na nasa story. Writers use characters to perform the action and speak the dialogue of a story. So, kapag uh, yung mga writer, ito yung, ano, ito yung nagdadala eh, yung character. Ito yung nagdadala sa story. Um, they perform actions and speak the dialogue. Mas, yun, doon umiikot yun eh. Yung mga sasabihin nila kung nagagalit sila o natutuwa sila or gusto nilang iparamdam dun sa kausap nila na naiinan sila. To simplify, the characters are the who of the of a story. I hope I don't need to ano di, uh, to discuss this anymore ha kasi dapat talaga alam niyo na kung ano yung character. So if you look at the picture, we have two types of character. We have the protagonist and the antagonist. Um look at the picture, we have Cardo and um who is this? This is Lorna Tolentino. So, kapag sinabi natin protagonist, sila yung mga main character, sila yung bida. While antagonist are the contrabidas. So, ma'am, pwede po bang sa story walang contrabida? No, palaging merong contrabida don Okay, sometimes, uh, sometimes madami, minsan naman isa lang talaga, pero mapapansin nyo at the end of the story, palaging yung contrabida, either makikipagbati siya or mamamatay siya, or magbabago siya, ganun. Kasi kailangan bumalik sa normal yung situation eh. Yung wala siyang kaaway. Kasi pag hindi natapos yun, doon tayo nagkakaroon ng part 2. <laughs> okay, the next element, the third. The first is, what is the first? The first is settings. The second one is character. And the third is plot. So, plot are the events that, uh, that takes place in a story. So, ito yung parts ng plot. Ito yung mga nangyayari sa plot. If you will notice, mayroon tayong uh, parang pyramid. 
Tapos may line. Kung pyramid yan, bakit kailangan pa natin ilagay yung line na to? Kasi may meaning yan. So, sa exposition, this uh, this opens the story. Dito pinapakita yung settings, yung situation, kung normal ba, yung okay ba sila. Yes. Dito yon Makikita mo straight line yan. Bakit straight line? Kasi everything is good. Everything is normal. Everything is uh, better. Okay? Ano siya? Uh, walang problema. So, kailan nagbe-bend ang line? Once we encounter the first conflict. Ano yung first conflict? Ito yung kauna-unahang problema. So, when we encounter that, doon tayo nag start na madagdagan ng madagdagan yung problema. Kasi, doon sa mga story na pinapanood nyo, kung mapapansin nyo, once na nagkaroon ng problema sa isa, sunod-sunod na yung pataas na ng pataas, padami na ng padami yung problema until they reach the climax or the worst part or the turning point of the story. So, as the conflicts uh, arises or do, uh, uh, or worsen, we call it rising action. Ngayon, pag na-reach na yung pinaka-pig niya, yung pinaka-masama niya, or yung pinaka-matindi na mangyayari, na, na conflict, bababa na agad yun into falling action. So, mapapansin nyo yung teleserye bago magtapos yan. Mapapansin nyo na yung mga nakaaway, yung nag-away, yung mga dating kontrabida, bumabait sila sa dulo. Or sabi ko nga, kung di siya nababait, namamatay sila. Or kung di sila namamatay, uh, napapalitan sila, or nawawala sila somewhere, or nabibisto sila sa kasalanan nila, mga ganun. Or makukulong sila. So, pababa na yun. And then once the problem gets solved, na okay na lahat, bati-bati na, straight line na ulit yan. Bakit? Wala na kasi ulit problema. Okay? So, ang kwento, nagiging maganda siya depende sa conflict mo, depende sa problema. Uh, let's take this for example. Gano ka importante ang conflict? Ganito. Morning, gumising ka. Ngayon pumasok ka sa school. Di ba kayo sa school, mahilig kayong ano, yung magkukwentuhan kayo bago yung klase. So, let's take this for example. Um, pumasok ka sa room, tumupo ka sa tabi ng best friend mo, and then you said, Huy, alam mo ba kaninang umaga, gumising ako, tapos naligo ako. Pagkatapos ko naligo, minum ako ng kape. Tapos nag-almusal na ako. Tapos, ayun, nag na ako, umalis na ako. Just imagine kung ano yung magiging reaction ng kausap nyo. Siguro, what? Why are you telling me that? Baka ganun. Kung, kung inglesero yung kausap mo. Pero kung ang kausap mo ay yung kaklase mong tambay sa kanto, Eh, ano naman? Ah, bakit ba kinakwento yan? O, oh, ba? Pero kung yung kaklase mo, eh, yung mga kaklase mong chismosa, anong susunod na sasabihin sa inyo? O, oh, tapos? <laughs> okay. So, I'm just kidding. But, seriously, di ba? Ganun naman talaga. But, balik tayo sa example. What's wrong with the example? Yung mga kinuwento niya, everything is normal. Kumain ka, gumising ka, naligo ka, nag-prepare ka. Kasi papasok ka eh. But, what makes the story what makes the story interesting? Paano siya naging story? Maliban na lang kung ikukuwento mo na tapos pagsabay ko sa tricycle, nakasabay ko si Crush. Does that happen every day? Hindi. So, ang mga kinukuwento mo lang yung mga unusual things na nangyayari. Kagaya yung napanaginipan mo, hindi naman paulit-ulit yung napapanaginipan mo every day. Actually, kung paulit-ulit man, that's very unusual. Talagang ikukuwento mo 'yon, 'di ba? Kung isang araw na panaginipan ko si ano, si Coco Martin. Tapos so, isang araw na panaginip ako na naman siya, nag-continue, nag-current ng continuation yung panaginip ko. So, still, that's unusual. ba? So, ikukwento mo siya. At nakaka-interest yung mga taong makinig do, uh, habang nagiging unusual siya. So, yung mga story, yung mga teleserye, habang nagiging twisted siya, habang nagiging grabe siya, yung, yung mga kwento nyo sa mga kabit-kabit, ba? Habang yung kabit, parang lalong tumatapang, lalong inaahas yung lalaki, or gumagawa ng masama doon sa kaibigan niya, parang mas lalo siyang nagiging intense, mas lalo niya siyang pinapanood, ba? So that is the reason, that is one factor in writing, that is uh, one reason kung ba't binabasa ang story or kung bakit yung mga tao eh hook na hook sa ibang mga short stories or hook na hook sa mga teleserye because of how the conflict is arranged and how the how how they let the viewers or the readers feel bad or nagigigil ka kasi bakit ganto bakit ganto nakakainis naman talaga yan okay that's one factor in determining the success of a story okay so let's move on so the first one again the uh, setting character and the plot now 
we have the fourth one, the conflict. Conflict is not part of the, ano siya. Hindi siya kasama dun sa plot actually. This is, this is another element. So, every good story requires conflict, sabi ko nga kanina. This conflict can be thought of as a challenge or a problem that drives the action of the story. So, basta merong hindi normal na nangyari, that's a conflict. Okay, halimbawa, nag, 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 uh, yung isang bata nakatira sa, ano dati, sa isang nayon, maayos, tahimik na nayon. So, balit, uh, sa hindi inaasang pagkakataon, ay nagkasakit ang kanyang ama at namatay. Super Tagalog. Okay, so, if that is our example, meron ng conflict agad doon, when the father died. Because it is not, it's very unusual. Although namamatay lahat ng tao, kaya lang, yun yung parang hindi naging, nag, nag, ano, yun yung nag-break nung line na straight. Na okay siya, masaya siya, tahimik ang lugar, payapa. Pero suddenly, biglang namatay ang tatay niya. So that is an example of a conflict. No conflict, of course, no story. Sabi ko nga kanina, hindi mo ikukwento sa kaklase mo na uminom ka ng kape kung hindi ka napasok. Hindi mo ikukwento sa kaklase mo na uminom ka ng kape kung hindi ka natapunan. Or hindi ba kung hindi mo nalagyan ng asukal. Kung meron kang nangyaring hindi normal talaga. Diba? Hindi mo naman ikukwento sa kaklase mo na ano eh. Kinuha ko yung kape, tas nilagyan ko ng kumuha ko tsara, sinalo ko yung kape, tas nilagay ko sa tubig. Tapos ayun na. Tapos tutulala ka na. Oh, hindi na pala si Ma. Diba? Ano yan? Ano ba yan? Parang... <laughs> Ewan ko, hindi ko ma-imagine. Kung face-to-face -face to, siguro tawa na kayo ng tao sa ganong kwentuhan. Oo, kasi yun yung palagi ko in example eh. Okay. Uh, conflict gives these events their idea why. Uh, later on yun, makikita niya kasi sa resolution, makikita niya kung bakit nangyari yun. Kasi bibigyan niya ng katwiran dun yun. It will make sense sa dulo. Okay, so the next one is the theme. A little more abstract than previous elements. The theme refers to the underlying insight. The moral or idea of the writer is ex uh, writer is expressing through the story. Ay, yung iba kasi nakukonfuse sa theme uh, as ano, lesson of the story. Hindi yun yun. So, ang theme ay tungkol sa anong story. Tungkol ba ito sa love? Tungkol ba ito sa uh, love of mother? Tungkol ba ito sa motherhood? Tungkol ba ito sa pagiging kapatid? Tungkol ba ito sa loyalty? Tungkol ba ito sa honesty? Okay? Tungkol ba ito sa... Sa... Tawag dito? Tungkol ba ito sa tragedy? Tungkol ba ito sa... Cheating? ba? Diba? So, yun ang theme. Yung theme kadalasan ay yung mga abstract nouns. Yun sila yung mga hindi nakakita. Kagaya halimbawa, yun love, nawakan mo ba yun, na, na lalasahan mo ba? Hindi. So, those are what we call abstract nouns. Most of the time, yung mga themes natin ay ganun. Okay, just um, just think of it kung tungkol saan yung movie or yung story na binasa mo. And another thing, ma'am, pwede bang magkaroon ng more than one theme yung isang story? Yes, it depends on how you see it. di ba Pwede yung story nakita mo na ano, the story is about the love of a son of of the son sa father niya. Pwede 'yun. Kahit na yung ibang tao nakikita eh yung pagmamahal ng tatay sa anak doon sa story. Ikaw 'yun na nakita mo as long as you can explain it. Kasi after mo ilagay 'yun, nalagay mo love. O tapos tuldok, tapos paliwanag mo bakit iyon yung theme ng story. Kailan mo nakita na yung mga incident na nagpapakita or nag na na focus doon sa Uh, sa theme na iniisip mo, which is love. Okay? Of course, we have our exercises. So, let us read the text entitled Black Nazarene Procession, All American Tourists by Julian Love de Jesus. I think this is an article sa Philippine Daily Inquirer. Make an outline using the 5 W's and 1 H technique. Pinaliwanag ko na ito sa last session natin. Okay? So, um, wait, wait. So, kung nabas, uh, let's go back. Kung nabasa niya na siya, pwede niya naman munang i-post tong ano, eh, uh, itong tablet. Tapos basahin niya, tapos saka kayo magawa ng sagot. So, again, these are the just suggested answer. But, uh, this is close to the correct answer. Kung yung sagot niya ay eh, close din dito, pwede niya nang i-consider. Halimbawa, uh, pwede din naman hindi kayo nagsagot or itinatak niyo lang sa isip niyo. Okay lang. So, what is the headline? The headline is the title, of course, The Black Nazarene Procession of American Tourists. The who? O, sino ba yung, nag ano, sino ba yung nandun sa ano, article? Sino yung kinukwento? 
si Torres na uh, which uh, the name is Jer Jerry Jerry Blevins, an American who went to the Philippines and happened to witness the Black Nazarene procession. So ayun lang, discuss pa lang who. Next, ano nangyari? Ano? What? An American tourist traveled miles and cruised among the sea of ecstatic devotees just to touch the Black Nazarene. Okay? So, yun yung ginawa niya. Yun yung nangyari. Pumunta siya talaga para uh, nakigulo siya just to touch the Black Nazarene. And then, when? As the procession started on Thursday, he tried to win over the crowd at 1 p.m. and ended up climbing in a tree, in a tree, sorry, in a tree, just to capture the Black Nazarene. So, ito, pwedeng ito yung when, pero itong he tried to win over the crowd at 1 p.m., pwede pa rin sa when, pero ended up climbing a tree just to capture the Black Nazarene. Pwede mo yan din ilagay dito sa what. Kasi ano din yan, ano nangyari? Di umakayat siya dun sa puno, dun siya nag-end up para lang makita yung ano, Black Nazarene. So, why did it happen? It says there that Manila, Philippines. So, why? So, bakit siya interesado dun sa, ano, sa Black Nazarene? Na nakawin niya ba? Is he going to steal it? No. It says, it says there that as a foreigner, ito hindi siya talagang nandun ha. But this is uh, the implied idea from the article. As a foreigner, he is curious about the Black Nazarene who was said to be, who was said to bless people with their own miracles. Um... Etong kinuha ko kong idea na to ay mababasa ko lang dun sa mga sinabi niya kasi pinaliwanag niya kung saan galing yung Black Nazarene. So it really showed na meron siyang interest doon sa history ng Black Nazarene or he just want to witness it, the procession. Okay? He, will, he just want to witness the procession. Okay, so next. Summary. Uh, or to generalize what we have learned today. How important is the skill of outlining? So gano nga ba siya ka-important? So, if you're writing an essay, outlining will help you a lot to organize your ideas in a logical manner, in a manner na walang mabubor sa pagbabasa. Okay? Now, if you are using outlining um, para mag-report or para i-transfer sa ibang tao yung, yung naintindihan mo or yung natutuhan mo, um, outlining is a good uh, proof na naintindihan mo yung binasa mo. Halimbawa, may pinabasa ako sa inyo, sa inyo and then I ask you to make an outline. It only shows na naintindihan niya siya. Okay? Kapag nagawa niya yung outline ng maayos. Pero kung hindi niya nagawa ng maayos, kinopia-kopia niyo lang yung mga words. It means, um, hindi niya naintindihan yung text. Kinamba niyo lang. Okay? So again, learning to outline is very important. You just really need to know which ideas are which and where to put them. And which ideas are the strong points and which ideas are the supporting details. Okay? Now, for your assessment, I want you to complete out, uh, the outline based on the story, the sub-sister's story selection. See module for assessment. Nasa ano niya? Nasa module niyo. Okay? Um, and then, you can submit it. Uh, you, uh, you can make it sa Microsoft Word or pwedeng yellow paper and then just take a picture and then submit it to me online. Okay? So, here are our references for the pictures and the, some of the content. Um, it's a great job, everyone. I hope to see you next time. I hope na may natutuhan kayo dito sa lesson na to. I'd like to uh, to greet uh, Sedi from 11 Virgo kasi uh, isa daw siya sa mga nanonood ng ating video lesson so hello Sedi I really hope that we can meet soon para uh, or we can have our face to face classes na para mas makapagturo or mas maintindihan nyo ng mabuti yung mga lessons natin okay so I hope to see you again next time thank you for watching everyone and please keep safe goodbye